The real power of 3D printing comes when you start making your own custom parts to help you solve problems. It is still possible to get a free version of Fusion 360 from Autodesk, and that's what we're going to look at today. Hello everyone, Chris here. For the next couple of videos, we're going to be getting back to the basics. We're going to go over just the little odds and ends that you need to know to get set up to create custom 3D printed parts. Now today's video is going to be about the personal free edition of Fusion 360. There are a lot of great CAD programs out there that you can draw different parts in and still 3D print them, but Fusion is the most common that I see and the one that I know the best. Now, if you want to see the Back to Basics videos, make sure you hit subscribe and hit that bell for notification because there will be several coming out and I release one every Wednesday. But now we're going to jump in just how to get Fusion 360 installed to make sure you get that free license. It does have a few limitations, but if you're getting started with 3D printing, that shouldn't be an issue for you at all. So let's jump to the computer. I'll show you how to get everything all set up. To get the personal version of Fusion 360, you need to make sure that you go to the correct URL. You can install the full version as a free trial, but I found it's hard to go back to that free license once that trial expires. So just make sure you install it this way for the personal use version, the one that is free. They do have a comparison what the difference is between the free version and the full version. Full version you can see right now it's $680 a year. If you're making money with it, that's the version you're going to need, so it probably doesn't matter that much, but we're just getting started, so we're going to go with the free version. It's more than good enough for anything that we're going to do. It's the more advanced things that you can see here, especially things like exporting file types that you're going to need a paid version to do. But from here, we're just going to click Get Autodesk Fusion for personal use. Pretty much the only thing you need is an email address to sign up. I do have an account already, but I'm going to create an account for this video. So we're just going to hit create account. You can type in your information, create a password you're going to remember, and then agree to the terms of use. And we'll create account. From here, you can choose whether or not to receive their email marketing. We don't need it. We'll just uncheck that and hit done. Now that we have an account, the site will guide us to download our free version, our personal use version of Fusion 360. So we'll enter the email that we just signed up with. We'll hit continue. Give it the same information we did before, basically. You don't need to add a phone if you don't want to. Give it some location information. And they want a little information about how you use Fusion 360. We're going to say 3D modeling, because that's what we're going to do. And what is our industry? We'll just hit other. And again, agree to the terms of use and hit submit. Now that we've got all that out of the way, we can just hit download now. Once you've clicked the download link, we do need to activate it. So we'll have to sign in with that account we created. You'll have to verify that email. They'll send you an email. So we'll get verification email, head to our email box. Here's our verification email. We'll verify email and we're done. Now for the final time, download now. You can see we're downloading up here. It downloads a client that will then download the products. So you can access them if you're using Chrome from this link. And if you're using Windows, most of the time, you can go to File Explorer and go to Downloads, and that will be your default download location. You can start it from there as well. And depending on your download speed, this will take five to 10 minutes to get it all set up. So we'll come back. The install is complete. Now we're ready to sign in. Fusion does use your browser to authenticate and then it will bring you back to the software. I'll show you how that's gonna work. We'll just hit sign in. It's gonna launch your browser and want you to sign in from here. So that same email address, we'll hit next. And your password, I'm just gonna tick stay signed in and we'll sign in. Once you've been signed in, you can go back to the product. It should already be open, but you can also click go to product. It's gonna throw a warning that the browser is gonna to try to open something on your computer. Since we know what we're doing, you can tick this to always allow it and open Autodesk. We're signing in. You can choose whether to improve Fusion experience by sending them data if you would like. 
I'll go ahead and do it because it is free. And then there are a few pages that give you some tips if you'd like to walk through them. You can also create a team in Fusion if you'd like to work with multiple people. But you can also be the single member of a team. So we'll just create a team. We'll call it Basement Team and hit Next. And for now, we're not going to allow discovery of that team. And we'll create. So we don't have a team right now, but down the road, it'll be there if we'd like to share this with other folks. Basement team's ready to use. We'll go to team. If you get a security warning like this one, don't worry. It's usually not a big deal. It just can't verify the certificate that it needs. Unless you're opening someone else's file, there's probably no need to worry because it's just communicating with the Fusion 360 servers. So we're just going to trust anyway. Fusion 360 is started. You have a couple of options how you'd like to open Fusion. I just always use the default of design. And we'll hit get started. And we don't have any documents yet, but we're getting ready to create one. So we'll just go to new. This tells you about the 10 editable Fusion documents that you can have. With the free version, you can only have 10 live documents at a time. That doesn't mean you can't have hundreds of different drawings if you want. You can just only set 10 of them to be editable at any one time. You can always tick them to read only and tick the other ones from read only back to editable if you need to. It's a little bit of a pain, but again, just getting started with the free version, it's not that big of a deal. So we'll hit OK, got it. Here's some tips on how to use the workspace. We'll just get started. There's a few setup decisions you need to make. I always work in millimeters, but you can work in whichever one you want, and you can switch that on the fly. You can also switch the way you navigate and view. I'm going to use the default of New to CAD because I think that's the easiest one to do. In the New to CAD, this is how you move around. So Pan, Zoom, Orbit. Again, I'll show you all about that as we create different things. I'll show you how to move around. It's pretty straightforward once you know what to do. And you can also start using their guided tutorials from here if you wish, but let's just jump in. So we'll close this. When you load Fusion 360 for the first time, if you're seeing this empty space over here, just try closing Fusion and opening it again. That should clear it up. This has to do with something about that new wizard. Every time you start it, it creates this space, but restarting it does clear it. You can see when we restarted Fusion, it actually came up as the learning panel. That's what it should have done the first time. And now you have a control up here that you can close the learning panel. And now you have your full area that you can do your drawings in. For this video, we're not gonna go very deep on how to use Fusion 360, but we'll just get started really quick and that will lead us into the next video. The important thing is, once you close Fusion and want to reopen it again, Fusion should have created an icon on your desktop. You can just double click on that here. But it's also in your Start menu. For Windows, if you go to the Windows key, you should have an Autodesk section. If you pull that down, there's Fusion. That will start it up as well. The first thing I like to do is go to the browser over here on the left. Make sure I'm in the unit that I would like. Again, we selected millimeters, but you can change that on every document if you wish by clicking this box. That should open up another window. You can move these windows around just by clicking on the top bar with your mouse and holding, and then you can switch that to whatever you wish, but we'll stay in millimeters. And then also in the browser here on the left, we're going to click on this eye that has a slash through it. That's going to turn on the origin. You can see here from the cube, the orientation of the drawing that you're looking at right now. Y is green, X is red, Z is blue. But we're currently looking at it from the front right top corner. And moving this cube by clicking on it with your left mouse and then moving it around, that's how you move the orientation of the drawing so that you can see all the sides. For 3D printing, I like to create from the bottom up, so we're looking at the top. To get started building something, you want to create a sketch. So up here on the bar, there's a Create Sketch icon. We'll click on that. And then you click on the origin that you'd like to start drawing on. Again, we're going bottom up. 
So I'm going to select the bottom one. Now you can see the cube move the top. So we're looking at the top of our drawing. When you're getting started in Fusion, it's going to be a lot less confusing if you build everything at 0, 0. That's this center dot right here where that origin starts. But this is going to allow you to keep track of where you are in the document much easier if you do it this way. So from here, we're creating a sketch. You can see the sketch palette over here. You don't need to worry about these settings quite yet. But once you're in sketch mode, you're going to get all the different things that you can sketch. If you click on the create, it has a down arrow. This is everything that's available in that sketch menu. These are just the quick things that you can create. And you can change all these up. We'll go into all of that. But for now, let's just create a circle. We're going to land that circle right in the center of our work area. We're going to drag it out to make it bigger. And let's just say this circle is going to be 50 millimeters. You can type in 50 or just keep dragging out to whatever size you'd like. When you have the size you want, just press the enter key. Now we have a 50 millimeter circle and we can finish sketch. So now we have a 2D drawing. It takes us back to the default view of that top corner like we were at the beginning. Again, you can move it around just by clicking and holding on the cube. To make it a 3D design, we would need to extrude this drawing. In the Create section again of the toolbar, we're going to hit Create, and then we're going to scroll down to Extrude. You can also use the letter E key, but we'll use the menu bar for now. It automatically selected that sketch because that's all we have to select. So we're going to extrude that into a 3D object. It's 50 millimeters around, let's just make it 50 millimeters tall. You can click and hold this arrow and you can see the numbers start to go up or you could always stop and just type over these numbers to create it as big as you'd like. So let's just type in 50 and hit enter. Now we have a 50 millimeter around cylinder that's 50 millimeters tall. That will get you started. We've just scratched the surface. There's a lot we're going to do, but now you have a free version of Fusion 360 that you can try out and you'll be ready for the later videos as we start creating more things. So there you go. Now you have your free personal edition of Fusion 360 you can use to create all those parts. We didn't go very far into how Fusion works today, but we're going to build on that over the next couple of videos. Next week, we'll go over slicing. How do you get that model you created in Fusion over to run on your 3D printer? So hopefully you found this helpful. That's it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.